but we're gonna talk today about networking. Networking, 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 the most misunderstood piece of business development in the world. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about myself. I'm gonna explain to you what networking is and then we're gonna get, get into as much content and as much help as I can with those questions that were sent, okay? <clears throat> so again, I'm Rick Silva. Years ago, those of you that are too young, maybe you never heard of a little company called Eastman Kodak, but when I worked there, it was the fourth largest company in the world. Now it doesn't even rank as a, as a big company, but when I worked there, it was like Google, Ford, General Motors, Eastman Kodak. I serviced copiers for nine years. Serviced copiers for nine years. Those nine years I drove from Castro Valley to Cupertino every day, listening to Brian Tracy, Zig Ziglar, Bob Proctor, uh, all the big guys in my car, about 9,000 hours in my car. I have four or five college degrees, and I don't even know if I put the joke in there, but I have a PhD from Automobile University. That's education in your car. <laughs> and let me tell you this, the number one, the, the thing we're gonna talk about today is not taught in school. So I have somebody who's a very close friend of mine, has about a 143 IQ, he went to MIT in Berkeley, he's way smarter than me, but they didn't teach him this in college. They don't teach networking in college. We're gonna clear up what networking is first and we're gonna get into some education. Um, <clears throat> I've been running networking groups and teaching uh, networking in August will be, so next month. So those of you that are watching this on record, this is July of 2019. August of 19 will be 16 years I've been teaching networking to professionals all over the world. Uh, I run referral groups, four of them in this room. I run monthly networking groups. I facilitated, I don't know, a thousand meetings. My company's been doing that for 15 and a half years, uh, running referral groups, okay? I have two courses on networking. I don't bring my courses to these, and I'm not gonna throw them down your throat, but I have a, a 10 hour course on networking, and then I have a six hour advanced course on something called power partnering. If you've never heard the term power partnering, you will today. So I have about 16 or 17 hours of, of recordings on teaching, networking, they're webinar based. I do one-on-one -on -one coaching on networking and then I have a whole bunch of videos on the internet. <clears throat> My short story where, right here where it says bankrupt, homeless in 2008, now I'm multimillionaire. So let me explain that real quick. So I, I was born, lived my life, got married, had a couple kids, 2008 came. And there's a house about a half a mile from here that in, in January of 2008 was worth this, and February of 08, it went $300,000 under market in a week. Those of you that remember the bank owned properties and all that stuff was hitting the market. And, well, I decided to get <clears throat> divorced February 12th of 2008. What timing I had. So I did what's called a deed of trust transfer and I handed that to my ex-wife and I moved out and I got an apartment and I still had all my coaching clients. Everything was going pretty good until March, April, May of 2008. I lost all my coaching clients, lost half my networking groups. My income was here, my bills were here and my bills went here and my income was here. I had to pay child support and rent and all that kind of stuff. I don't know about you, but if, you're, if your income was cut in half and your bills doubled, I don't know how long you can live on your credit cards. I lasted about four months and I went bankrupt. Uh, I got out of my lease in my apartment. I just couldn't afford it. I rented a room. I put everything I, I owned in storage. This is in 2000, late 2008. And then my friend decides to buy a house and he's moving away. I got to find a place to live. This guy right here has an office in the Pleasanton Hotel, which is two blocks away. Across from his office was my office. So I launched a networking course, pre-sold it, made 10 grand in an hour. And I got the largest office at the Pleasanton Hotel. I moved in there. When it's a refurbished former mansion, it has uh, closets in the bedrooms. I put my clothes in the closets. I bought a beautiful futon. I lived in my office and I showered at the gym. I was homeless for seven months. And I'm not gonna cry on video, but normally I start crying when I tell that story. We just don't have the time for Rick to cry. Okay? <laughs> we got too much work to do. Um, I'm, I'm homeless. That lovely young lady right there, Marcella, that's my wife, joined B2B Gathering, my networking groups. And after a few months, I got to know her. I found out what she did. 
Um, we started dating and moved in with each other. Marcella helps people invest in land. I moved in with her uh, and I devoted my 10 or 15 hours a week to networking. At the time I was working like 80 hours a week, but I devoted 10 or 15 hours a week to land, I should say, and the rest of my time to networking. And then what I slowly did is as we were building the real estate business, I was able to cut down on my networking time and went from making nothing to over 600,000 a year for multiple years in a row. Our investments are in the multi-millions of dollars and I'm here for fun now. And I did that in eight years. Let's clap for me. I very rarely ask for that, but, but hey guys, I went to Heald College, okay? If I can do it, you can do it. They don't teach this in school. Learn from my leather, Teflon skin, the blood, the sweat, and the tears. Just learn this from me. We're gonna go into content now, it's enough about me, okay? Uh, I do wanna tell you this, I facilitated, I've, I've attended over 1,200, I probably facilitated about 1,000 networking groups if you guys have been in networking groups before. This, I put 5,000 and people don't believe it, the, the true number is over 6,000 coffee meetings, but 5,000 people don't even believe that. I've had over 6,000 one-on-one coffee meetings. Over 6,000 one-on-one coffee meetings. I don't do a lot of internet-based stuff. I don't talk on the phone. I'm face-to-face. -face. If I'm gonna introduce you to one of my clients, I'm not gonna do it because I met you on the phone, okay? I'm a relationship guy, I'm a networker, not a sales guy. You're, you're selling when you're in the sales process, but until you're in the sales process, you are a networker. So everyone in here, you're gonna be a networker, you're gonna be a cold caller, you're gonna be an advertiser. There's your, there's your choices. We're gonna get a little deeper on that topic right now. I already told you my income's in the top 0.0002% of all people in America. And I don't tell you this for, to brag, I tell you kind of how much we make so you know if a healed college grad can do it, you can do it. That's why I'm telling you. If I can do it, you can do it, I promise. So also, I wanna give you a quick side education. A number of you emailed me and sometimes you'll send an email from one computer or maybe your computer at home or maybe your iPad or your phone. Let, let me explain you. I don't care what you use to send an email. Every single piece of technology you have has the ability to put a signature file. And I do a lot of emailing from my phone. When you send it every email, every outgoing email, every reply email, if you start it or you're applying have the reply to have this information because if I can't find it, if other people cannot find your contact information, you're gonna miss out on referrals. Flat out, hands down. Every single email you send, even if it's a response that says okay. You wanna have, um, oh, it's the, next, it's the next slide. So every email, this is what you should have. This is the minimum a signature file should have. Your name, your company name, your email address, your phone number, and your website. That's the minimum for every email you send. That's the minimum it should have. So if I can't get, if I'm in a coffee meeting and I wanna give your information to someone, I'm gonna open up a past email, I'm gonna cut and paste the information, I'm gonna either text it or email it to the person right then. If I gotta wait till I go home, I might forget. Or that person might find another vendor. I'm going to give you a perfect example. This computer right here that I'm using right now died yesterday. And I got a place down the street I always go to. I went there. They went virtual. They don't have a, they don't have a, a location anymore. So I went on the internet and I sent them an email. And I waited an hour. I got a laptop down, dude. So I drove to San Ramon and I went to uh, another computer place. They fixed it in 40 minutes. That company missed out because they didn't re reply fast enough. So I'm getting at is if you're, you want to be Johnny on the spot to give somebody a referral, but you also want to be able to be referred on the spot so people don't forget or go somewhere else, okay? Cool, you didn't think you're gonna get that kind of education day, did you? All right, cool. Who here has never heard the term, you gotta fill your pipeline? Thank God, your sales pipeline, okay? Am I a sales trainer or a networking trainer? All right, so that's called the sales pipeline, but not in my class. That's his class. My, that guy right there with the, with the handsome shirt right there. He's the sales trainer. I'm a networking trainer. So 
just to give you a quick example, <clears throat> sales, I'm gonna give you a different definition of it shortly, but basically when you're in the process of meeting with somebody and getting them to sign a contract and all the steps involved in that, you can be the best salesperson who ever lived. I'm not a great salesperson. I don't need to be because people referred to me. It's done. When people come to us to buy land or to join my networking groups, they've been pre-sold by people like her. Chris Lacey, now she's on recording forever. So if, if I'm built up in the proper way, hey, Rick Silva's done this and you gotta, you gotta talk to him. When they call me on the phone, they're ready to write a check. So again, sales guy is in sales mode. If you don't learn either to use social media, to cold call or to network, you are going, I'm gonna make this very clear. If you're not good at social media, cold calling or networking, you are going to be a very lonely, very good closer. So take the best closer whoever lived that can't build a relationship and take the best networker whoever lived that, that can't close a deal, the networker is going to win every single time, hands down bar none, because you don't have the business in the first place. Who are you closing? Okay, so let's talk about this a little bit. <clears throat> There are times to be each. That's where I'm going with this. Now, this is a faucet. This is the sales faucet. This is the networking faucet. There's times in a conversation where you got to turn the networker off, turn the sales guy on. But there's times in the conversation you got to turn the sales guy off and turn the networker on. I'll give you an example. <clears throat> if you're a real estate agent and you're meeting with a client and the client goes, well, now that I moved here, I need a hairstylist, a chiropractor. I need to know who's going to do my roof. The real estate agent turns off the real estate transaction, turns it off and turns the networker on and the networker goes, I can introduce you to three hairstylists, two chiropractors, three roofers, what do you need? When they're done with the introductions, they turn the networker off, they turn the sales guy back on and sell the home. You gotta learn to turn off one, turn the other one on and go back. You're, pe people who teach, a, a, it's called, um, there's a million different, ABS, always be selling, um, that's great if you don't want referrals. People don't want to be around people who are constantly selling all the time. There's a time to sell, there's a time to network, there's a time to market. And I'm gonna tell you right now, based on the questions you sent, and this isn't your fault, I don't want to insult anyone in the room, I'm not gonna make eye contact with anyone in the room. Very few people in this room know the difference between sales, marketing, and networking. I know that because of the questions that were sent. I'm gonna clear that up for you today because when you understand the difference, then you know which, which, which faucet to turn on, okay? All right, so there's only four. Anything you name, we're not gonna get in an argument here, but anything you name on how to bring business into your company, there's only four ways to bring business into your company. There's only four, okay? The first one is cold calling. It has its place if you're new in business. If you've been in business longer than a year and you're cold calling, it's not your fault, but you're not good at building a network. It's not your fault, you weren't taught. Or your sales manager said, go out and bang the phones, bang the phones, bang the phones, because he doesn't know how to build a relationship. He's not a good sales manager. That's my opinion. If you've been in business longer than a year and you're cold calling, it's not your fault that you haven't been taught how to build a network. And I wanna help you because I feel bad. The four word definition of cold calling is a waste of time. Now, having said that, cold calling is absolutely the quickest way to build your business. The quickest way. I want to explain to you, have, who in here has ever cold called for business? Awesome. Okay, when you make the cold call, let's say you make 50 calls and you make a sale. At that moment in time, after the 50 calls you made the sale, guess what? You're now unemployed you got to go do it again and how excited are you to go make the 50 calls again Woo! let's go baby let's party so here's a quick example of the difference most people cold call 50 potential clients if I'm a real estate agent I'm knock on 50 doors hey everybody my name is Rick Silva I'm the local real estate agent checking to see if you're looking to buy or sell a home in the next 60 to 90 days and people knock on the door with that and they do 50 and I say, I want you all to knock on 50 doors. 
But if I'm a real estate agent, you know the doors I'm gonna knock on? Financial planners, CPAs, estate planning attorneys, family law attorneys, relocation companies, movers, roofers. I'm gonna make the same 50 calls, but I'm gonna make it with power partners. If you don't know what a power partner is, you're getting a gist now. And I'm gonna go deeper on it here shortly. I'm still saying to cold call, power partners not for clients. When you cold call for clients, as soon as you make the sale, you're unemployed. When you cold call for power partners, you're building a long-term relationship. So there comes a time when you get to be in the lucky position I am where you don't look for business and you can't even handle the referrals that are coming in. Like sometimes I have to slow my referral partners down like I can't handle it, which is a very good place to be. And then you can become more picky, pick higher paying clients, fire a lot of your current clients. Remember the 80-20, always remember everything in your life is 80-20. 80% of your money is made by the top 20% of your clients 80% of your time is wasted by the bottom 20%. You're always looking to fire the bottom 20% and replace them. It's called the Pareto Principle. All right, then there's advertising. There's nothing wrong with it. It's the best source of leads, 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 leads. But it's an absolute complete waste of time if you don't have a tracking system in place. Most people play, pulling all, all these ads, whether it's Yellow Pages, Facebook, LinkedIn, whatever it is, they don't track it. The phone, the phone rings for business and they're busy servicing the client. They don't even ask the person how they heard about them. Everything has to be tracked. Everything has to be tracked. If you don't, don't advertise. It costs a lot of money and creates tire kickers. Now let me ask you guys a question. If you run an ad anywhere and somebody calls you on the phone, what's the first question they ask you? Say it loud. How much, does it cost? how much does it cost? When you advertise, the first question is how much does it cost? So I want you to, to learn this statement. When you're advertised, you're commoditized. When you run an advertisement, people are gonna ask you how much because they don't know you, they don't care, there's no value built. They just wanna know how much it costs. Okay, when a referral comes in and my CPA tells me to call Ted, Ted does insurance. Now, my CPA says you, you need to get this insured or Nick. So we got two insurance agents who use either one. I don't, I don't wanna look like I'm playing favorites. Do you do, you, do, you do auto? Yeah. What, what type of insurance? Life, disability, long-term care. Life, and you do life? Yeah. Uh, perfect, let's do life. A CPA says, um, hey, I'm look, you, 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 you're having kids, getting married, you need to have life insurance. Okay, when that client calls either one of you, they're gonna go, I need to meet with, my CPA told me to call you to discuss life. The very last question they ask is what? How much? They don't care because their CPA said to call them. When a trusted advisor tells you to call someone, we have a chiropractor in the room. If a fitness trainer says, right there, if a fitness trainer says, oh, if you're working out and you say, my, my back's bothering, I can't really do it. And I give them Dr. Wong's card. They are not, I, I, sure, I guarantee you, I'll quit the business. If somebody calls Dr. Wong and says, Dr. Wong, my back's killing me, how much do you charge? No. Dr. Wong, my trainer told me to call you. I got a back issue. When can you get me in? After the adjustments, I didn't even ask, how much is this? 65 bucks, oh my God, I would have given you 200. That's the difference, that's the difference. I'm not saying don't advertise, I'm saying you better have one hell of a system in place to build your credibility, usually through videos or very good ad copy, or you're wasting your time, you're gonna be on the phone with tire kickers all day long. Word of mouth is your warm market. You start a new business and you tell everyone you know what you're doing. So. Pretty much every person in the room had a career before this. Maybe not everybody, but most of you had at least one, two, or three careers. Well, when you switch careers, you tell everyone you know. That's called word of mouth. They call it word of mouth marketing. Now, if you're just telling everybody what you do, yes, it's word of mouth marketing. I can teach you how to make it word of mouth networking, which is completely different. And I don't know how deep I can go on that today, but word of mouth marketing or word of mouth networking don't exist in the same conversation. It's the most fun, but guess what? When, when your warm market runs out, 
you got to meet strangers. No! That makes me scared. Not after today, hopefully. All right, and then there's networking. So networking is being here and handing out your cards and emailing some people that you got the cards, emailing some people, having some coffee meetings to see how you can help each other build your business. Going to networking events, which we are going to go deep today with as much time as I have. We're going to go as deep as I possibly can on networking events and what to do at networking events when you're, when you're having a room full of strangers, okay? So you do these four things, no matter what you do to build your business, no matter what there is in the world, it falls under one of these. It, it, Rick, social media is advertising. Facebook, advertising. LinkedIn, advertising. It's all advertising. If you're making posts around your business, it's marketing, which falls for me under advertising. And if you do it the way I do it and you program people's minds to get referrals, then we're over here. But 99% of what people do on social media falls under marketing, which I just put it as a topic of advertising. You do these things, you have business coming in, you have, you have leads and referrals coming into your business, okay? I'm just gonna go like this right here. So we have leads and referrals coming in our business. We're gonna pre-screen them because um, if you're a real estate agent and you specialize in homes that are uh, 900,000 to 2 million and somebody wants a $400,000 condo in San Leandro, that's not your market, you're gonna refer that out. So you wouldn't even in that case, in my opinion, set an appointment with them, you'd refer them to somebody that can help them. So we gotta pre-screen to see if we can even help them. If a company has, uh, I don't know, if the company has 50 million employees or 50,000, maybe you can't service that, maybe you have to refer that out and then maybe you get a referral fee for referring to a company that can handle something that big. So you meet with them and you're five minutes into the presentation and you go, I'm sorry, I can't help you. And then you kind of wasted your time. So you want to pre-screen them. I have a pre-screen form that I use in our real estate business. I'll be more than happy to send it to you. I'll be able, I think I'll be able to show it to you at the very end of how we pre-screen before we talk to anybody. So we have the business coming in. We are going to make some sales. I'm going to walk over here. You're not going to close everybody, but you want to, you know, try to increase your close rate through referrals. You have the business coming in. And this is the thing, this is my specialty. Most people, they make a sale and they go back and they do this again. Then they make a sale and they go back and do this again and they make a sale. The people that buy from you are the fifth element. So these are the four. And then people that buy from you, you teach them and you program their mind on how to find referrals for you. So you wanna make these people part of your non-commissioned, non-salaried sales force. We wanna teach them how to find business for us. We wanna teach them how to become part of our non-commissioned, non-salaried sales force. So here's, this is the outline really briefly of what my two courses look like. So this is you and we're gonna draw a line down the middle and we have two sides of business development. We have this side where we have past, current and, and future clients who could send us business if you teach them how. Okay, so these are from your clients, people who buy from you. And when you think about people who have purchased from you, that's on this side. On this side are people that we don't care if they buy from us. A real estate agent should never care if a mortgage lender buys a house through them. A real estate agent should teach the mortgage lender how to send them referrals and vice versa so they can build their network. Not worrying about selling to them. We have three insurance agents in the room. Look at that. So two of the three do auto. So if I was an uh, auto insurance agent, I'd be meeting with chiropractors and body shops among ev uh, many, many other. I'd be teaching an auto body shop how to send me referrals. I wouldn't care if the owner of the auto body shop bought his PNC through me, I could care less. I want to get referred to his clients. So that's another time when you got to turn the sales guy off. Don't ever sell to a power partner. It's called a person of influence, a center of influence. In the networking world, it's called a power partner. Don't ever sell to a power partner because you're going to lose future business. Okay. So this is a 10 hour course that I have. This is about a six hour advanced networking power partnering course. That's what you see networking basics and networking guru course called the Coffee Meeting Millionaire Essentials and Coffee Meeting Millionaire Mastery. That's the name of the courses, okay? 
So we're gonna take components of these two courses and I'm gonna do my best to help you. And I got 55 minutes to teach you a lifetime of information. Kathleen isn't here, but we're gonna do this anyway. Okay, so I emailed and, and, and you guys sent me questions and Duncan, Kathleen. Now, those of you that said anything you say is great, I'm not gonna have as much personalized to you. Duncan sent me like five paragraphs. So a lot of stuff I'm able to help him more because he put a lot of effort into what he would like help with, okay? So this is Duncan. I, uh, I struggle to communicate what I do in a clear and concise way. Most people think that everyone else but them need my work. I think most people in the room think that. That's from Duncan. The other one, to, to feel like I'm on track to start building relationships with like-minded business professionals to let them know how I can help them. Okay, I wish Kath, Kathleen's missing out. Okay, now, so I, I, I forgot to say this. I used to fight. I got a black belt in karate. I got a purple belt in Brazilian jiu-jitsu. I like to fight, but here I'm not here to fight. I will tell you this. I should have said this in the beginning. Whew, yeah. I am not here, and, and it's, it, just listen to what I'm saying. I'm not here for you to like me or for us to like be longtime friends. I hope you all like me, and I'd love to become all longtime friends with you guys, okay? But if I'm here hugging you and we're singing songs, I can't teach you anything. You guys understand? I got to teach you stuff. To teach you stuff, sometimes you're going to get a body shot because I gotta wake you up and I gotta rewire you. So you might not like some of the things I say today. Sorry, sorry, don't do it. Rick's a jerk, fine. But Rick's also up here teaching a topic that he studied for 20,000 hours. So if I say something, I am not here to hurt your feelings. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna say something to you. I'm not here to hurt your feelings. I'm here, I'm here to, you weren't taught that in school. So one thing I know from Duncan's statement, I struggle to communicate what I do in a clearing because most people think that everyone else but them need my work. This tells me that when Duncan is networking, he's in sales mode. That's it. Does anybody else think otherwise? That's it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull the wire out of your sales channel. I'm going to plug it in your networker. That's it. I'm gonna, everything you're doing is right, I'm gonna, but i got to flip your mentality. Okay? There's a time to network and a time to sell. I'm going to tell you now and I'll probably say it. Again, coming up, when you go to a networking event, don't ever sell, don't think about selling, you're not there for selling. If you're going to sell, stay home, you're wasting your time. You are not ever, under any circumstance, going to a networking event to sell. People smell it on you, you become that, that quote unquote network marketing guy who does pyramid blah, blah, blah. By the way, just so it's because it's on recording, Network marketing companies have made more millionaires than any industry in the world. There are some that have crappy ways they teach people to uh, network. They call it the puke factor. Go to a networking event and anybody that you could throw up on, you should sell to. But guess what? The next time you see that person, you're like this. We don't want to be that person because then you're never going to get anything out of that chamber because everybody wants to. You ever, you ever see like a drop, drop a, uh, you have bubbles, if oil dropped in it, the bubbles would scatter. That's you, if you're a sales guy. And I don't know if that's you, Duncan, because I've never seen you. But I can tell you that this right here means you're selling to people you have no credibility with. Now, if a human resources consultant was in a company and looking at what's going on, you guys, you guys are falling apart. You, I'm bringing Duncan in and you're going to talk to him. No, it's okay. If you guys hear noise, shut that door, but as soon as it ends, if you could open it. Um, but no, it's good for right now. If I'm a human resources consultant, I say, you got to bring, you're, you got people pissed off here. You got to bring Duncan in. He can help with team building and all that. I don't even know what you do, but I'm pretty close, I think, because I went to your website. Yeah. So when you go in and talk to that business owner, 100% sales mode. In a networking event where you mean so, who the hell you are? This better be the last thing on your mind. They never want to talk to you. They're going to run from you. They're going to, oh, the reason they're telling you they don't need it is because you're trying to sell to them. We're going to do something called the indirect sales approach. We're actually going to pull people in. We're not going to sell to them. We're going to tell them stories about what we do that's relatable to them. So they look at you and go like this, Duncan. 
I think we need to talk. Let's set up a time to talk. Instead of, ah, I don't need that, but it's because you're selling to them. We want to do something called the, the indirect sales approach. We want to pull them in. Um, this one here, she, just, she was in networking groups before and thinks she has a little bit of concern. She didn't get as much out of it, out of it as she would have liked. My guess is it's the wrong mentality. It's still sales mentality. Or going there, going, let me see what I can get. And if I don't get anything, I won't come again. Which is why most people stop going to Chamber of, Chamber of Commerce events. Well, I went, I didn't get anything out of it. <laughs> what did you give? What did you give? Don't get me on my high horse about people saying I didn't get anything about a networking events or Chamber of Commerce events. I've made millions. Look at the look on Marcella's face. She's like, we've made millions and millions and millions of dollars going to networking events. I promise you they work if you're not going there to sell and you're going there to help people. And now the helping, when I say help people, has nothing to do with what you do for a living. Dr. Wong is a chiropractor. There's two ways he can help people. Number one is adjust their back so they feel better, but he got paid for that. That's a sales guy. A networker goes, I need to lose weight of this, and he refers his client to a personal trainer. That's a networker. One's a sales guy, one's a networker. You guys see the difference? You gotta know when to be what. All right, this is from Dr. Wong. For me, chiropractors are kind of like a dime a dozen, and so since I may not be the only chiropractor at an event, someone knows, I hope to build a connection as well as create more value to be one that they would refer others to. Did I not just give you the example? And I forgot this was up there. When you meet with a client and you adjust them and say, have a great day, then you are a commodity. I could get that anywhere. When I'm talking to you and I go, uh, so like five or six years ago, my grandmother passed away and I inherited some money. If I'm laying on your table and I'm saying things like that, the response should be awesome. Do you know good CPA? Awesome. Do you know good financial planner? I'm getting ready to buy a new car. Do you need a good insurance agent? You know, I, I woke up, I, w I wake up, my, my back's always bothering me when I wake up. I think you need a new bed. That's your job to refer them. That's your job as a networker. And some people are going, and think of that. They start thinking about it. Because that's one of the reasons you're here is because you're not thinking enough about it. Now, having said that, my wife's here and she's not gonna hear anything new today. But she's still here. The one thing about coming to these classes, like some of you have been a couple of times, but most people come once and never come again. Number one, I can promise you the contents, 90% is gonna be different at every one of these, number one. And number two, those of you old enough, a Beatles song comes on that came out in 1964. And it, or, or whatever you guys listen to, because some of you are a lot younger than I am. I wasn't born in 64, by the way, but a song comes on and as soon as it comes on, you haven't heard it in 15 years and you sing every word. You know why you know every word? Because you heard it a thousand times. So when you come to one of my classes and never come again, in 15 years, try to sing that song. You can't because it hasn't been ingrained in your mind yet. You're welcome to come here every month. If I got to get, get a bigger location, we'll, we'll, we'll move it out of here and put it somewhere else. Okay. So the definition of selling, <clears throat> yeah. For sure, absolutely. Yeah, as, as when, whenever you listen to an audio recording, you'll hear it a year later and go, I don't remember that. I never heard that before because your mind wasn't ready to hear it. Yeah, you're right. Your mind wasn't ready to hear it. All right. So, uh, Selling first and foremost is a transaction between the seller and the prospective buyer or buyer. Selling is the art of persuading the consumer that buying the product or service will benefit him or her. Selling is a process by which one person guides the other people's behavior along a path in the desired direction, culminating in the purchase of a product or service. Selling is meeting with somebody, shaking their hand, normally in a higher ticket item, and then ultimately pen in hand, sign here. Now, to get the person to the sales, to the, to the final moment when they're gonna purchase, guess what? They need to know a little bit about you and that's where it comes either from a referral or from a marketing piece or a website or a sales funnel or a video. Marketing, an organizational function and a set of processes. I, I, I just wanna point out here, in selling, it's a process, it's a system, marketing, process or system for creating, communicating, delivering value to customers. 
the ongoing process of moving people closer to making a decision to purchase or use our product or services is marketing. If it doesn't bring in leads and it doesn't facilitate the sale, then it's not marketing. So selling is getting people to sign on the dotted line. Marketing is getting them closer to sign on the dotted line. Networking. I feel that networking is through the law of reciprocity, a system in which you help others reach their personal and professional goals, knowing that in return, you'll be helped in reaching yours. The chiropractor who says, adjust, 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 have a great day and leaves. And the chiropractor who says, um, one of the reasons you have this issue here is because you have this issue here. We got to get you in better shape. You got to go get your blood tested, go to a doctor. You got to go to a personal trainer. You might need a uh, weight loss specialist when he's bringing those other professions to bear to his clients. Now he's a networker. He's building uh, credibility with his client to get more referrals from his client, but he's also building credibility with those other, those other referral sources to then build his network. Sounds easy, but it's what you're saying to them. It's how you're programming their mind and firing the reticular activating system, which is in the brainstem, and the way you're teaching them to send you referrals. Because I can say, hey, just introduce them to a personal trainer. There's a whole lot of scripting that goes behind that. We just don't have time to do it all. I'm trying to give you an overview of what you need to become, but the wording is, that's a lot of work. Okay. Duncan, look at Duncan. I want, I want to be more memorable, memorable in a way that makes people remember to reach out to me when they need my help and not wait so long that things have gotten out of hand. I want to be upstream from conflict rather than helping people pick up the pieces. So, I love it. Go back to the body shop and say, this is not any of this you're gonna cover in a networking event, okay? You're going to cover this when you're meeting a human resources consultant, which is probably your best power partner, business attorney. What's the size of the companies you like to work with? Head count, number of employees, minimum at two to a hundred, two to 500, 10,000? Yeah, 10 to a thousand. 10 to a thousand. Yeah. So what we got to do is we got to sit down and think of all the different professions that call on companies like that. So we go, does the CFO, the COO, the HR manager, who brings you in? The title. Oh yeah, human resources. Fantastic. So we, we think about all the different people who consult and sell to an HR payroll, uh, uh, human resources consultants, on and on and on, rent the CFO, business coaches, business attorneys, bankers, financial planners, multitudes of different types of CPAs. That's the only people you should be talking to. And then that's when you're explaining this to them. You're not going to a networking event and telling a complete stranger this frustration you have or the sales process you have. They don't know you, they don't understand, they don't care. Having said that, having said that, I'm gonna give you some ideas on what to say. We're gonna talk about the law of attraction and we're gonna do the first third or so of my elevator speech training. I cannot do the entire training today. We do not have the time. But if you email me, hint, hint, you gotta put in some work if you want me to work. I'm not a trained puppy. If you guys want me to do some work for you, you do some work. You email me, I'll send you two videos that I created on how to craft your elevator speech. You watch them, you type your elevator speech. I will take what you typed, what you sent, and I'll create a final version, okay? And then there's something else that I offer that I'm gonna discuss the details on I will videotape myself giving your old version and I will videotape myself giving the new version and I'll put it on my YouTube channel. Okay, if you're interested in that, let me know. I'll tell you more about that. Or I'll actually do your elevator speech for you after I recreated it for you. Okay, all right. So we're gonna get a little crazy, get a little space agey here. We're gonna talk about elevator speech and it's not what you think. So one of the things that made me um, there's no way that made me wealthy is one of my mentors when I sat down with him he said he goes I, I know you're a big deal and I know you know a lot about what you do he goes but now you're here to learn this business and he pointed at the door and he goes the only way I can teach you is if when you hit the door you take off 
your 10 gallon ego hat. So if you're all sitting here going, I know elevator speech, you'll learn nothing. I promise you, you don't know elevator speech. You're about to find out you don't know elevator speech. My whole life revolves around teaching this topic. Most people, hey, I know how to tell people who I am. No, that's not elevator speech. We're gonna go into it now, but I gotta get crazy and space agey before I can teach you elevator speech. You ready? Okay, law of attraction. One of the definitions of it is we track from the outside what we resonate with on the inside. So for a sales guy, you're not gonna get referrals, okay? One of the other definitions, I attract to my life whatever I give my attention, energy, and focus to, whether wanted or unwanted. Well, you're giving some focus on when I go to a networking event, I want referrals, but then you say things like, I go there and I never make any sales. You want referrals, you want sales. You want referrals, and then you make the sale later. So we gotta concentrate on referrals. We concentrate on sales when it's time to make a sale. Okay, if I take a tuning fork, the key of A, <clears throat> okay, and I strike it, do I hear a cool tone, whatever the key of A is, right? Now, <clears throat> if I take another tuning fork, the key of A, and put it next to it, guess what? This one makes this one start to ring, and they ring in resonance. Once you imagine gears that are flowing perfectly. <clears throat> strike the key of A and take the key of C and put it next to it the key of C will knock out the key of A and the key of A will stop ringing. Take gears that aren't meshed the same and when they go like this, they disintegrate. Okay, now, when I'm ringing the key of A and I put another key of A next to it and it starts ringing, are they touching? No. What caused this one to ring? Vibration. Say it loud. Vibration. Can you see it? Can you see the vibration? Well, okay, you're the naked eye if I'm no, under a microscope and, and infrared and stuff, you can. No, I'm talking about the vibration that goes from here to here. Okay, so can we all agree there's things in the air in this room that you can't see? And if anybody says no, then I can't help you. So if I have, a, if I have an old school radio, oh, perfect example, check this out. You guys see this in my pocket? You guys just thought I had a big butt. See that red light? It's communicating with that microphone over there and the sound is going into the, do you guys see the sound? But it's over there. So if I put a radio on the table and I, I turn the radio on to rock and roll or country or whatever, does it go into the radio and come out on the speaker? Yes? Yeah. So, so could we possibly agree that I'm holding country music in my hand? It's possible. Yeah. Rock and roll classical music, when I turn the radio on, it taps into that frequency and pulls it in, right? So I'm gonna teach you how to tap other people's brains to the frequency of referrals. Do you guys understand? All the referrals you could ever handle in your lifetime are in your hand right here. You just don't have the radio station, which is right here, tuned into the right radio station. I'm gonna teach you how to tune it into the right radio station. Everybody see how we went space agey to bring it back to getting referrals? because you have a radio tuner in your brain stem and it's called the reticular activating system or the RAS. The reticular activating system or the RAS. Let's go on. Oh, by the way, this two people resonate. If you've ever stood next to somebody and go, every time I'm next to that guy, I feel uncomfortable. I don't feel right. That guy gives me the willies. That guy puts off a vibe you're key of A and he's key of C, you're just canceling each other out. For some reason, there's something going on that doesn't resonate. It's generally because one of the two people isn't coming from love, so they're not resonating from love. Maybe they had a bad day, maybe, maybe a friend or family member is in the hospital. Um, they have pent up anger, they could have drug or alcohol issues, they could be near bankruptcy and they're stressing out. Could be a lot of different things. Um, if we all came from the same residency, then, then you wouldn't be standing next to somebody and going, I got the willies from that person. But if you do, get away. But here's the bottom line. Can you see what's making you feel awkward? No, but it's there, okay? What's feeling it is your reticular activating system in your brainstem. Did you study that in college? No. 
No, I'm talking about the chiropractor. Chiropractor did. I was pointing at the chiropractor. All right. All right. <clears throat> What's that? Say it loud. Acorn. That's an acorn. You're all wrong. It's a wood carving. It's a yeah, it's a, it's a wood carving of an acorn. That's, a, that's the only built-in joke I have in the whole Prezzo. So that, that, but that's the best picture I could find of an acorn. All right. So when we plant it, what grows? Say it loud. Oak tree. Oak tree. Not a lemon tree? Not a rose bush? Not a redwood tree, but it wants to be a redwood tree. Come on. Why not? What's, what, what's, what's up with this that it can only become an oak tree? It's DNA. Yep. What's its DNA? So like if I cut this open and look at it, do I see a little tiny tree in there? A little tiny tree? No, I see the potential to become an oak tree if it's planted under the right circumstances in the right environment. So in there are things, I'm not a scientist, I'm going to call them things, that are vibrating at this radio station. If I want country music, do I tune to country? If I want rock, do I tune, tune to rock? If I want an oak tree, it's tuned to only be an oak tree. It doesn't have a radio controller in it. It's going to become an oak tree because it's genetically programmed to only be an oak tree. You guys got it? Awesome. Yes. So this needs what's in the water, what's in the soil, and what comes from the sun that will create an oak tree. So if, what, if whatever's in here vibrating at a radio station that creates a redwood tree, will it, will it be attracted to the nut or repelled? Attracted or repelled? Attracted. Repelled. If what's in here, the vitamins and the nutrients that are in here that create a redwood tree, oh. repelled. Okay. Only what's in here, here, and from the sun that's in the same frequency, vibrating at the same frequency, then it flies into the nut. Is that a redwood tree? From a little tiny nut that would be the pin size there came that from this not from that that's the genetic potential potential to create that but w the vitamins in here here and here that are attracted to that nut to create that is the only way that grows here's where i'm going with this the reticular activating system is in your brain stem it's a singular function device it doesn't have 9,000 functions. It has one vibrational function at a time, at a time. So if I go, hey, what's a good client for you? And you say, anybody? If, a, if, that, if that acorn was planted in the ground and said, I want to grow into anything, will it grow? No. But I'm a real estate agent. Anybody's a good client. I'm a real estate. Anybody can buy from me. I'm a real estate agent. Everybody needs a house. Cool. You'll never build a referral-based practice. It has to be laser-specific to fire the reticular activating system in your client's brain so you can get referrals. So I'm going to give you examples of the reticular activating system by talking about the grocery store and the gray BMW. So how many of you <clears throat> have thought about a topic or thought about a car or bought a car or was thinking about buying a car? And everywhere you went, you saw that car. Man, I started thinking about that Mustang. I saw 50 of them yesterday. Or you, you thought about a certain topic, and every magazine you picked up, every time you went on the internet, it was right in front of you. Okay, let me tell you this. It was always there. If you started thinking about buying a Mercedes, and you saw, and you saw two a day, as soon as you started thinking about buying one, you saw 30 a day. I just bought a, a, a new car. And I had never thought about that car. And I remember seeing one or two a week. I, I, I was getting ready to buy it. I was seeing 10, 20, 30, 40 of them a day. Guess what? They were always there. You're not so powerful that when you decided to think about that car, that the whole world decided to drive them by you. No. The cars were always there. Your reticular activating system wasn't focused on it. They were always there. Let me assure you this. 
all the referrals you could ever handle are right there. You haven't tapped into it yet. All those cars are always there. You elected to see them. All the referrals you can handle are there if you elect to see them. And the way you see them is you gotta teach other people how to find them for you. Because if you're looking for them, then you're selling. The grocery store is you have a grocery list. I'm gonna steal this and give it. I'm not even gonna read it. I'm look at this side. You have a grocery list. You go to the grocery store, peanut butter, and you grab the peanut butter and put it in your cart. And you wheel along. Now you know that three lines down is says jelly. But you grab the peanut butter, I'm going on a list. You go back to the jelly and you grab the jelly and you go, what an idiot I am. The peanut butter's right there. Why didn't I just grab it? You didn't grab it because you have a reticular activating system. That's why you didn't grab it. Now, if you did, cool. But most of the time, you walked right by it. Unless you're really good at stopping and thinking. But you're not dumb. You have a reticular activating system, okay? All right. So, now, got it. Okay. I'm giving you eight minutes, nine minutes on one hour of instruction. So keep in mind, I can't go super deep on any of these topics because we'll be here till next month or I'll only get one topic done. But <clears throat> I want to coach you on this one part. I highly recommend you do this. Now you don't have all the training, but you have enough to be dangerous. The only way I know how to find you referrals, any one of you, is I want you to get a mental picture of this. If you want to teach me how to find you referrals, I need to pre-frame this with this. I want you to imagine, you have to do this for your business, not mine, for your, but think about what you do for a living, okay? Two complete strangers are sitting in a coffee shop, having a conversation. Two people are having a conversation. What will I hear one person say to the other, word for word that will make me think of you? Is that enough to help you write one sentence? If you can write the sentence, write it. If you need help, let me know. Two people are talking. They're having a conversation. One person says something to this person, the only person I think about is you. My back's been bothering me. Done, write it down, if that's what it is. But if you guys can't write the sentence and you want me to help you, let me know. Because you can't get, yeah, write it down right now. Your two potential clients are sitting in a coffee shop talking to each other. And one says, you know, I'm, I'm, even, I'm afraid to go back to my office because my, my employees are constantly arguing. Well, if you knew Duncan, that's the only guy you'd be thinking about. Because I went to his website, so I cheated. Every time I call my insurance company, I, don't, I can't get someone on the phone. I just switched over from, from Apple to Microsoft, and I don't know anything about Microsoft products. Roger Steinbraun. I don't know what you guys do, because I didn't get a chance to meet you before. Man, I look at, I look, I, we were, I was sitting down with my CFO, and I was looking at my billing, and the, the amount of money we spend on garbage and rent, and all these fees that we're paying I, I just, I think I'm being overcharged right there. Okay. Joe Iovanetti. So, but it's got to be uh, for you, for your business. Now you guys are counting and bookkeeping, right? Yeah. So uh, my, my, my CPA just retired. My accountant just retired. You know, I've been, I, I've been doing everything in a shoebox. I think it's now it's time to find a bookkeeping company. That's the type of stuff people will say to another person. Okay, you need those sentences to then teach them to your power partners. If that went over your head, just know you need those sentences so you can teach people how to send you referrals, bottom line. I'm losing a lot of employees. I better start having better benefits or I'm gonna lose even more. Christine Lacey. So she'll take that sentence and teach it to everybody she knows. So if she ever hears a business owner say, I gotta work on the benefits off for my clients, the only person gonna think is her. But you're programming their reticular activating system with the quotes. Now, this is, that was 13 minutes of a one hour training. If some of you are lost, I got it. 
but email me and I'll send you the two nine and a half minute videos on elevator speech and you'll be clear after that, okay? Just know you need to learn the quotes. You need to figure out what people are saying word for word that's your business. We're growing, I, got, I need software components, I gotta have high speed internet, I need more computers, my internet sucks, uh, my phone system's crap, that guy right there. Say your name out loud. Brad Tucker. Brad Tucker. I like when other people do it and I do it. Brad Tucker. The technology, it's that guy. But he, it's his job to tell everybody he meets that. <clears throat> so Duncan, instead of going, and I'm not saying you do this, but instead of going up to somebody and go, do you have conflict at your office? Say, hey, you know what I do? You can say this to anybody. You know what I do? Hey, if you ever heard a business owner talking to another one, they said, wow, I got some infighting in my office. I, 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 I don't know what I'm gonna do, but I got some people that are pissed off. If you told that to every single person you met, you wouldn't handle the, be able to handle the business. If you go up to people and go, hey, here's what I do. Do you need that? Here's what I do. Do you know someone that needs that? It's gonna fall flat. It's just, it's all in the wording. I don't want you to go to less events. I want you to go to do all the networking you're doing now. Just, you're gonna say different things. I can't fix your whole world in 90 minutes. I'm just giving you ideas. Are you guys cool with that? I wish I could go deeper, but I mean, we don't have three days. <clears throat> now, now we're gonna, this is gonna be good. Elevator speech and this is my specialty. All right, Duncan again. <laughs> Look at that. Is Maylee here? No, she's not. Okay, all right. So where to network, how do we efficiently, uh, or efficiently and or effectively communicate, not just what I do, but also make it seem relevant to people's li uh, lived experience or life experiences, how to convert a connection into a client, never. We got that now, right? Yeah, like, never, yeah. never. You're gonna program their mind with the quotes and they're gonna go, that's going on in my company, we gotta talk. If you go up to them, do you have a company? No! But if you tell them a story, hitting them with passive quotes, they go, my wife's company, my wife comes home every night telling me about those problems, I gotta get you hooked up with them. I'm interested in learning more about building a solid foundation in business and relations. I'm a good people person, but when it comes to business, I want to work towards being more confident in networking and other business relations. Well, step, can I, get, can I tell you guys the single most important component to this? You gotta come to the seminar. <laughs> I can't help you if you're not here. Okay. How many of you go to live events? Networking events. You've never been to network? Come on, you guys have been to network. You're here, this is one. So you're all lying, who didn't raise your hand? Because this is a networking event, it's a class. But did we not exchange business cards? Do you not have an opportunity to meet people in the room for coffee outside of here? Okay. Ooh, I have more. World famous Roger Steinbron, building relationships from my encounters. Sir Joe, joining an existing conversation in a mixer, learning how to make networking greater asset to my business development activities. Woo, Kathleen's not here. One of my concerns is that I don't wanna feel like my time is being wasted or I'm just showing up to, to meetings with no results. This has been covered. This means the person's going there trying to sell. So step one, don't sell. The reason why you think it's a waste of your time, the reason why you get nothing out of it is because you're going to an event looking to make a sale. Those of you watching the video, if you're going to networking events trying to make a sale, stay home because I don't want to be near you. Because I don't want you selling your stuff to me. Okay, so if you're doing that, stop it. And I very rarely in my trainings, even if I'm one-on-one -on -one coaching you, I'm very rarely gonna say here's what you should and shouldn't do, I'm gonna say here's what I did. But one thing I'm going to tell you you should and shouldn't do is go to a networking event and sell your crap because no one wants to hear it. Don't be like everyone else. People go, I don't go to events because everybody tries to sell me their crap. You don't have to be them. Okay, now I want you to look at this picture and then I'm gonna back it off and I'm gonna spend until till we leave, I'm gonna teach you what to do at networking events. Okay. Now I want you to think about what you do. You're a conflict negotiator. 
you do life insurance, you do PNC insurance, your accounting, your chiropractor, your insurance, your, you help people uh, very nicely without wanting to kill each other go through divorce. Technology, software, software, saving money, sales coach, insurance, software, doesn't matter. You're here. Here, here, and here. I'm going to use the easiest ones to work with their insurance, real estate, mortgage, financial planners. It's just the easiest to paint their picture for. It doesn't matter though. So let's say, I don't, who cares? Well, we've got a lot of insurance agents in the room. Today's insurance day. So we'll put insurance here. <clears throat> so an insurance agent is going to have lots of other insurance agents and power partners. I don't care what kind of insurance you do. You can partner with other insurance agents. So if you're an insurance agent, you're going to want to, and you, and you live in this city, you're going to want to have real estate, mortgage, financial planners, attorneys, hundreds. I'm giving you five, <laughs> hundreds. And then uh, those of you that don't live in my area, you have Pleasanton and then Walnut Creek's 20 miles away. This is a network you built in Walnut Creek, real estate, mortgage, financial planner. Maybe this one's in Livermore or this one's in San Leandro or Oakland or San Francisco. Now, one of the things you can do as a networker is you can introduce your network to your network. So if you have a real estate agent in this city, they might want to meet a mortgage lender over here. They also might want to, a real estate agent doesn't do Walnut Creek. They might want to know a real estate agent Walnut Creek. Well, remember, this is your network. So then you start introducing people in your network to other people in your network, and then you don't have to be always sending, sending business to each other. You can be sending relationships to each other which I would rather have you send me, uh, I, I network mostly with mortgage lenders. I'd rather you send me a mortgage lender than somebody with $100,000 waiting to invest because when the person invests, I'm not saying don't, but if they wanna buy land and they got 100 grand, I'd be more than happy to help them. But when I'm done selling to them, I'm unemployed again. If you send me a mortgage lender and I learn how to network with that mortgage lender, I've got a lifetime of business coming in. It's just a mental switch. Everyone's, I want referrals, I want referrals. I don't, I want power partners. I'll get the referrals from the power partners. All right, this is what you should look like. That's your job. That's your job as a networker. That's your job. You wanna see what most people do? This is most people, right here. And that's why you don't make a lot of money. You can't make a lot of money being a loner, being alone. You gotta build a team I'm not talking about a team of employees, I'm talking about a team of salespeople that you're not paying. And I'm, Duncan, I'm gonna keep going back to, for you, human resource consultant, rent the CFO, business coaches. Just those three could keep you busy for 10 lifetimes. Just those three. So that's you doing this. That's you doing this. And then when you, ha when you meet an HR consultant in Oakland and you meet, uh, rent a CFO in Walnut Creek? Do you think they'd like to meet each other? Oh my God. You should be facilitating lunches between those two people. Then now you got three people on your team and then you're programming their mind with your elevator speech and not trying to sell them. You're teaching them how to listen for referrals. Will it happen overnight? No. All right, now I'm gonna go to blank slate because I don't want you distracted. I'm gonna give you an hour and 20 minutes in 16 minutes. This is one of my signature presentations that will not be done justice today. Okay, but I'm gonna teach you absolutely as much as I can on what to do at a live chamber of commerce event or a trade show or wherever you go where there's a crap ton of people in a room, okay? There's something called the Networker's Toolkit. I'm actually gonna shoot a video shortly on, on Networker's Toolkit. It's, it's what I carry in that backpack over there. But when I go to a networking event, my cards, okay, and a pen. So what I do is I put my cards in the left pocket, okay? And then as I meet people, I put their cards in my right pocket, either pants pocket here. If I have a purse, I just bought my wife a beautiful purse. I know they have pouches. Okay, your cards go one place. Here's why. Because if I put them all together and I go like this and I go to pull my card out to hand it to someone, I pull, oh God, that's not my card, hold on. No, they don't put them together. So I'm gonna put these cards here. 
in this pocket. Now, I bet accounting, tell me what type of insurance you did do again. Okay, so do you guys think that any of your any of your clients as a bookkeeping company would ever have a client yes. that wants to offer those types of services to their employees? Or you, or you guys, right? Perfect, I'm gonna use you too because it's good when you're presenting to present to the people in the back of the room because if I just present to you, they're all left out. If I'm presenting to you guys, I'm covering everybody. There's another little public speaking trick. Speak to the people in the back of the room and then look down once in a while, okay? All right. So step by step, word for word, this is where you're gonna take super fast notes or you're gonna record it. I'm also recording this as long as the camera's still running and my battery hasn't died. You guys are now gonna get how to do it. Now, step one, when you walk into the, I'm gonna, this is gonna be, again, I can't give you a lot of details. Okay, when I open up my car door, my mind is saying two things. I'm gonna see how many people I can help tonight. That's number one. I'm gonna see how many people I can help tonight's number one. Number two, 10 cards an hour, 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 10 cards an hour. Minimum, I get 12. 10 is, 10 is really hard for most of you to get until you get good at it. Most people collect zero to three cards per hour. Just stay home. So I'm gonna see how many people I can help that is not by selling them my stuff, it's by doing this. So when I say I'm gonna, how many people I'm gonna help, it's how many people I'm gonna attempt to refer to other people later, number one. And number two, 10 cards an hour. And those 10 people I'm not gonna sell to them. I'm gonna educate them, I'm gonna fire the reticular activating system so they become non-commissioned, non-salaried sales force. I want to put this down because there's no need to hit the button too often for this. Getting out of my car, how many, I'm going to see how many people I can help tonight. 10 cards an hour, 10 cards an hour, 10 cards an hour. When I walk in, uh, what side do I put either my magnetic, which I highly recommend getting magnetic name badges because I've ruined at least $3,000 worth of clothes by taking the name badge right, and, and then going like this, my beautiful suit. The adhesive got on my beautiful suit and the dry cleaner can't get it out. So I ruined, I ruined, I ruined a suit coat. Um, but whatever it is, whether it's glue or magnetic, where does it go? Right side. Say it louder. Right side. Right, right. why? Because you offer your hand. Correct. Close. Right, because when you shake hands, your shoulder <laughs> comes forward. So then I'll do the presentation, five or 600 people in a room and somebody always says, well, Rick, but I'm left-handed. What hand, do you, what hand do you shake with? What hand do you shake with? So I go, so when you sit, and I've done this, 615 people in a room, a guy went, but I'm left-handed. I go, awesome, what hand do you shake with? My right, cool, you're left-handed, so you put it on the left to serve who? He didn't speak up again, to serve himself. But Rick, I'm left-handed, it's easier here. Tough, I don't care if it's easier for you. When you shake hands, the name badge does this, this comes forward and then people go like this and maybe that person's known you for five years but they forgot your name and you just caught them going he forgot my name that's your fault you embarrassed him you caused him to be embarrassed by not putting it on the right side name badge goes on the right okay now i did this for the women's council of realtors There's 115 women in the room and when i said put it on the right it was deafening <laughs> you're half the room <laughs> It was hilarious. You guys aren't laughing, you weren't there. Trust me, it was funny. Um, okay, so when walking up, okay, so a few more, I'm, I'm trying to figure out what I'm gonna tell you when I only have 13 minutes to each an hour and 20 minute presentation. I don't approach people holding a plate of food or a drink. Wine, beer, or a plate of food, I won't approach you because that person's there at a party. I'm not, okay? So that's, that's another thing, it's just me. Um, Joe asked how to approach a group of people. You don't have to. Who said you had to? You can also start picking them off. Now, what I do instead of approaching a group, Joe, I go in with my top three power partners in my mind. Give me, give me your top power partner. Give me the industry. Just one. Financial planner. Awesome. Financial planner. This is what I would do. I could go to any chamber of the commerce country in the world and do this. Just go to the chamber find one of the ambassadors or find who's running the chamber. 
and walk up for, for here it would be Kate or Don. And I would walk up to Don and I'd say, you're, you're, gonna, you're gonna hire a financial planner, who would you hire? She's gonna answer it that fast and she's gonna point at me standing right there. That's the only person. If, if I went to an event and I did that and I walked over to that guy, John, my name's Rick. I just talked to Don and she said, you're the best financial planner uh, in, the, in the room. I network a lot. I'm always looking to add good people to my network because I never know when my clients are gonna need somebody that does what you do. Would you happen to have a card? I'd love to meet you for coffee. I just handed you guys a million dollars. I just gave you the word for word script that's made me millions and millions of dollars. Whether you memorize it, got it, wrote it down, whatever, I'll give it to you again. But that, if, if Joe, if you left with that one card, you did better than attacking a group of people that you don't know and then it's a, no offense to a piano instructor, but you weren't there for a piano instructor, right? So if I'm only looking for financial planners, I'm going there to only meet financial planners. Now, let's back off because that's advanced. Let's just go normal networking event. When somebody walks up to you, what's the first thing they ask you? What do you do? Man, you should get my class. It's almost like I've heard you. You gotta keep hearing it over and over. I gotta keep hearing it. You guys want to teach this stuff, honestly? When I, don't, I don't need to teach it anymore but I love it. But you know why I teach it? To remind myself. Because I gotta keep my blade sharp. I'm doing this more for me than I am for you. I'm just kidding. Doing it all for you and I get the practice out of it. All right. When somebody walks up to you, the first thing they say is, what do you do? Okay? So that's an acronym. This is, this is another bad joke. But what do you do is an acronym for I'm gonna ask him what he does, and I, or she, and I hope their answer is really short because I don't care. And as soon as they're done talking, I'm gonna sell them my stuff. So I hope they don't talk that long. So when somebody walks up to you and says, what do you do? Let me promise you, they don't care. So, this is gonna sound crazy. Take this any way you want. This is my opinion that I have not earned the right to tell you what I do. I don't deserve to tell you what I do. Most people go to events and go, I can't wait to tell everybody what I do. I do everything I can in life to never tell you what I do. Why? I wanna know what they do. I don't wanna come off as a salesperson and I wanna get them to chase me. And they don't care anyway. They want to tell you what they do. So here's the thing. Somebody asks you what you do, you do not tell them. Now I'm going to give you the scripting. You ready? Brad, do it. So, uh, hi, Let's Brad take Tucker. Um, what do you do? You know, Brad, I talk about myself all day long. When I come to events like this, I want to see how I can help great people. You seem like a great guy. How about if you tell me what you do first? Now, what that did is Brad, if I would have answered it, Brad has anxiety. Brad's like, I wonder where Rick's gonna finish because as soon as Rick's done, I get to talk about myself. They're hearing one fifth of the words you say, they're not listening anyway. So by putting it on Brad, that's what he wanted anyway. What do you do is, I really want to tell you what I do, but I'm trying to be nice. I really don't care what you do, but I want to tell you what I do. So as you're talking, this balloon is filling with air. What I'm going to do is on deflate it. Get all the air out, take all the anxiety away. Brad, I, want, I like to, I, I'm, I'll tell you about what I do later. What, why don't you tell me what you do first? I'd love to see if I can help you. Any way you want to say it, just get it back on him. He tells me what he does, and then I pull a fast one. So do I have your card with me, Brad? Brad, pass your card down here for me. We're gonna do this, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna virtual reality with the, with the camera, pretend like I'm talking to the person on the camera, but we're gonna do this. So, okay, so Brad walks up to me, shake my hand, Brad, and, and ask it. Hi, Brad Tucker with Qsynthes, what do you do? Hey, hey, Brad, you know what, before we do anything, would you happen to have a card? I'm going in my left pocket where my cards are, and I'm gonna hand my card to Brad, and I just hand, as he's reaching out, <laughs> And then I'm gonna take Brad's card. I'm gonna grab my pen. What do you do? Now you don't have to answer because you already did. What do I look like? You're invested in care. 
Do I look like possibly I'm someone that uh, works at a restaurant? I'm ready to take your order. Mm -hmm. I'm ready to serve you. I'm here to serve you. So Brad says, what do you do? I say, Brad, I talk about myself all day long. I'd love to hear about you and what you do. Before you tell me anything, would you happen to have a card? Boom, take his card, go like this. Brad tells me what he does. I go, fantastic. Let him talk. What areas do you like to work? Do, do the whole thing. There's, I have, again, that's in my long training of the questions I'm going to ask. But the last question I'm going to ask is, Brad, if I could introduce you to three people in any industry that could help you build your business, what industries would they be in? You already know the answer. Hit me. So, uh, ironically, just as fast as you can. Direct sales reps. Sales. Uh, telecom sales reps. Um, uh, copier uh, salespeople or computer repair. And, uh, I'm going to put down IT. I'm going to go salespeople, copier people, and IT people because we're running out of time. Sure. All right, perfect. So I get that out of Brad. Now, I let Brad talk. I asked him a bunch of questions. And on the back of the card, I wrote down his three top what? Power partners. Why? Because I want to find them for him. Do you guys understand? Not only have I not told him what I do, and I tried very hard not to tell him, I want to walk around the room and find salespeople, copier people, and IT people to walk over to him. If he's a good power partner for me, he's a piano instructor, I'm not going to do this. Okay. If he's a good power partner for me. So now I got to get away. And Mr. Bailey, we did this the other day. Stu goes, I got to go network. And I go, Ugh. you say that to the wrong person, I'm going to get offended. I'm going to tell you what to say. I could trust that you would handle it. Yeah, I could handle it. I knew because we know each other. But you just don't, you want to come up with something for strangers. I, three people in any industry could help you build your business. What industries would they be in? Sales, awesome. Hey Brad, I know your time is valuable and I don't want to take any more of your valuable time. So I'm going to let you go network. However, I network a lot and I know a lot of people. Maybe I could send you an email. Maybe we could meet for coffee sometime. Nice to meet you. And I'm going to shake his hand. I'm going to walk. The chance that he's going to stop me and ask me what I do is slim to none and slim left town. You know why he's so happy? Because he got to tell me what he did. And I found out his power partners. Who controlled the entire conversation? Me. Because I got to get 10 cards an hour and maybe, maybe the other person is there to get one card the whole night, but I need 10 an hour. So the whole scenario goes, hey, what do you do? You know, I talk about myself all day long. I'd love to be able to talk to you about what you do. Before you tell me that, would you happen to have a card? What do you do? Boom, 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 boom. Cool. If I could introduce you to three people in any industry that could help you build your business, what industries would they be in? Sales, copy, IT. Fantastic. You know, I'm looking around. Man, there's a lot of people here. And I don't want to take any more of your valuable time. I want you to be able to go network with other people, but I'd love to meet you for coffee, something like that. What I want to say, but you cannot say this. What I want to say is, hey, Brad, I, got, I spent enough time with you. I got what I need. There's a lot of people here that my time is valuable. I need to go network with a lot of other people. I'm going to let you go. You can't say that. So instead of me saying my time is valuable and I want to go talk to other people, your time is valuable. I want you to go talk to other people. One, he wants to punch me in the face. One, he loves me. You figure it out. Okay. Now, when I walk away. Now, Roger's the closest thing I have to IT in the room. He was technically in IT. I don't have any other IT in here, right? No, but Roger, Roger could probably fix any computer in the world. Let's just use Roger. Roger, you're going to be an IT guy. Okay, cool. So I'm walking around. Now this card's here. This card's here. I'm just walking around. Roger, you know the deal. Shake my hand and ask the question. Oh, what do you do? Hey, you know, Roger, when I come to events like this, I love to meet great people and see how I can help them. Uh, I'd rather know what you do. Would you happen to have a card? So he's going to give me the card. Toss your card over here real quick, Roger. Uh, if you, okay, I'm just going to, take, yeah. I'm going, to take, I'm going to take this card right here and pretend this is Roger's card. I'm going to get Roger's card. I'm going to go like this. What do you do? Roger's going to say I do IT. I do IT. Fantastic. Hold on. That's, you know, I can't believe you're saying that, Roger. Roger, I just met with Brad... He's got an interesting company named Qsensus Technology, but he does, he does cloud work and, I, and, and IT technology work. And I was just talking to him. And he said he wants to meet IT people. That's crazy. Would you like to meet him? Where is he? Uh, thank you. He, he said, where is he, for those of you watching on camera. I'm now going to walk Roger across the room to Brad. 
and I'm going to wait. If he's having a conversation, I'm going to wait. And when he's done, I'm going to go, hey, Brad, when we were talking, you said you want to meet IT people. He's going to be, I'm going to have to pick him up off the floor in the first place. I just met Roger. Roger said he does IT. I got goosebumps. I can't believe it. You two should talk. Have a great conversation. I walk. Now, listen closely. Does Brad know what I do? No. Does Roger know what I do? No. Right. But when you go to a networking event, you're trying to sell your stuff to everybody. A year from now, who's going to have a Disneyland line, long line, an e-ticket ride waiting to meet them, and who's going to be running from the other person? So what we do, I'm going to show you the, 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 the coup de grace. Did you have a question? I got to do it quick, but you look like yeah. you got something. Yeah. Okay, but if I haven't told you what to do, how do you know, uh, other than the power partners, I guess that's your only... Coffee purpose. meeting. It's just, it's Coffee meeting. Why do, I need to, why do I need to know everything else about what you do when I only have two hours at a networking event? Because at a networking event, we're on a time limit. I got to get 10 or 15 or 20 cards in two hours. I can't have a 35-minute conversation with you. I'm going to do that at coffee. Nice and relaxed. 6,000 coffee meetings. Now you know why. All right, so now this I never gave out. This is like you had to pay me money for this. And I'm gonna give you the short version of it. What is that? We're gonna end and I'm, we're only gonna go about four minutes over. What is that? Is it a whiteboard? It's a picture of a whiteboard, what's that? That tells you it's a magnetic dry erase board. You wanna see the one in my house? This is bigger than this, it's huge. So what I did is I used my cards because I don't want to put other people's cards up there. I go to a networking event. I get home and here's the cards I collected from the networking event. Now every person in here, every person in here has a stack of cards somewhere. You know how I know? Because they're right in front of you right now. So if they're not anywhere else, you have them right in front of you. So none of, none of you are going to get out of what I'm about to say. Somewhere, here, in your car, in your bag, your home office, your work office, somewhere there is a stack of cards. Ready for another gut shot? Oh, boom! The people in this stack can't go on their next vacation, can't make their next house payment, and it's your fault. They're not making as much money as they could, and it's your fault because the cards. So when you get this and then it offends you or bothers you is when you're going to build, build a referral based practice. You're going to take those cards. Look at that. And you're going to magnetize it. And you're going to magnetize. Those are magnets. See that magnet, 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 magnet. And then you're going to go, hmm, I bet this insurance agent would like to meet that CPA. And I bet that bookkeeper would like to meet the CPA. And I bet that mortgage lender would like to meet the real estate agent. I bet the financial planner would like to meet the banker. And you're going to draw lines. Step one. Step two, in your drafts, in your computer, you already know what a draft is. You can send yourself an email and throw it in a folder called draft. And anytime you want to, I don't write an email twice ever. Why? Once it's written, why would you ever rewrite it? So you, you type this email and send it to yourself and throw it in your drafts. And when you want to use the email, you click forward and the email stays in the drafts. That email is going to say something to the effect of, hi blank, it was great to meet you at blank event. I also met blank. I really think you two should meet and get to know each other better, have a coffee meeting and see if you guys can't build business together. Now, remember I told you guys, I have to earn the right to tell you what I do. I don't feel that I've earned the right to tell you what I do until after this. I go to a networking event and I find somebody to introduce them to. Or when I put the cards up here, I have all kinds of other cards. I might pull one off my desk to introduce. If I don't have matches here, I'll go get another card and add it to it. After I've gone, okay, Mr. Real Estate Agent, you should meet this mortgage lender. 36 hours later, 48 hours later, I'm gonna send them both an email saying, hey, I hope, I hope you got along or you will be able to set a coffee with that person. 
I have a huge network. Uh, I'm always looking for people that are in your industry because there's gonna come a time when one of them might need your services. I can't refer you to my clients if we've never met. Would you like to meet for coffee? And if so, make sure you bring a stack of business cards so I have them to hand out when I meet my clients. So guys, that's the end of the presentation today. There's a lot more to it. Um, I have a couple courses that I have if you want more information about it. I do one-on-one -on -one coaching. I hope you got something out of it today and thank you for coming. Okay. Thank, you. thank you, thank you. And if I didn't get to your question, I'm sorry, I'll get it next time. Thank you.